Scripture says this, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice, and what does it say? It says, and be glad in it. So today, I want you to do something for me. So wherever you're watching, whatever device you're watching, if you're watching it live or you're watching it later on, here's what I want you to do. I want you to smile. Okay, do it, ready? One, two, three, smile. There's something about rejoicing in our God because He is more than enough. He is greater than anything you're going to face today. He's going to be greater than what you're going to face next week or the weeks and the years to come. He is greater than. So rejoice and be ready to worship, okay? So I hope you're ready to worship. So stay with me and let's worship together.
Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the bones of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival. You have no evil. Now and forever, God, you reign. For yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name. I'm so glad you decided to join us today as we finish our series we've been in for the past few weeks called Greater Than. We're going to continue on with that and we're going to finish up the book of Hebrews. So grab your Bibles, grab your mobile devices, grab whatever you need to, and let's turn to the Word of God in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse, in chapter 13. Before you do that, hey, I want to encourage you with this. Guys, we serve an awesome God who is faithful He's a faithful king and an awesome, a mighty king. I want to invite you to some things. So one thing I want to invite you to do is this. I want to invite you to our midweek service. Our midweek service takes place online on Zoom. We have a link that you'll see below, and we have a link on other things that you're welcome to join us on every Wednesday at 7 p.m. So wherever you are, you can grab on your mobile device. We have people who watch on their mobile device. We have people who watch on their phones. We have people who watch on um, their computers. So you're welcome to come interact Grab the Word of God. We're in the book of Galatians right now. You don't want to miss this opportunity to gather together. It's, it's almost like a midweek recharge for things. Also, I want to encourage you, guys, join us for our virtual missions trip. Virtual missions trip on October 12th or 15th. You don't want to miss it. It'll be 730 at night. The cost is minimal. And if you are in the local area where you have a special, as you pay, you get a special box that you'll be able to interact throughout the week. And just awesome opportunity to learn more about the nation of India and from workers in that area. So guys, I want to encourage everyone. So everyone who's watching this, everyone who's part of our church, and you're, if you're watching this, you're part of our church. I want to encourage you, join us on this trip. If you are a young adult or college age or below, we have a special scholarship for you. Someone in our church has donated some money that will help pay for your trip on this virtual business trip. So if you want to be part of it, you, we have 10 spots left, I believe, at this time. So if you want to be part of it, let us know, and we will get that for you. It'll be all online on Zoom. You don't want to miss this opportunity as we learn more about what God is doing around the world and how we, as a body of Christ here in Princeton, New Jersey, and around the country, can be part of it. But guys, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness in, in giving to Jesus. 
and making an impact around the world. I love that our church is not just a church located in New Jersey. Our church is a church who reaches the world. We believe so strongly in reaching outside of ourselves. And so right now, as you prepare your tithes and offerings, I want to encourage you with this. There's four different ways to give. You can send um, a cash or a check in, uh, through an envelope to 26 Nassau Street, Princeton, New Jersey, 08542. Or you can go right on Venmo, which is a great cash app, and go ncc-church and give directly through Venmo. You can go through our website at nassauchristian.org, or if you're watching on Nassau Christian Online, there's a little tab up there, the generosity tab, click on that. We'd love to connect with you with that too. And Zelle is directly through your bank. A lot of people are doing Zelle right now, which is a bank-to-bank -bank transfer. Super easy to set up, great, great opportunity. And guys, awesome, awesome things we can do together. And guys, thank you. Because of your giving, we're making impact, not only in our local community, but around the world for the love and the message of Jesus Christ. So I hope you're ready. I'm ready. I'm, I've been gearing up for this moment. I'm excited about today as we end our series called Greater Than. And so today, would you turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12 and 13? So greater than. Today we're going to be talking about God's unshakable kingdom. I want you to hear this. Our God is greater than. I want, you, I want you to hear this again. Our God is greater than. Why don't you just, wherever you are right now, would you just say that out loud? Say it with me. Our God is greater than. Our God is greater than. We have to know and believe now that our God is greater than anything or anyone we will face. We have to be convinced and assured that His steadfast grace is there for you in the past and in the future. Even when we're facing uncertain times, we can do this. God is not uncertain. I want you to hear that again. Even when you are facing uncertain times or things, God is not uncertain. That is why this entire series has been a call to you, a call to me, a call to all of us to go deeper and have a deeper commitment and a deeper perseverance and a deeper hunger and dependence and assurance on God. Because if He's greater than, that means He's greater than your concerns. He's greater than your worries. He's greater than your fears. He's greater than your doubts. That means He's greater than everything. And so today, as we've been walking over these past weeks and weeks and weeks over the book of Hebrews, we're continuing today, Hebrews chapter 12, God's unshakable kingdom. James Bryan Smith said this. He said, You are one in whom Christ delights and dwells. You live in the strong and unshakable kingdom of God. The kingdom is not in trouble and neither are you. Leave it up on the screen for a second because I want people to hear this and I want you to see this. You are one in whom Christ delights. You are one in Christ the lights and dwells. You live in the strong and unshakable kingdom of God. The kingdom is not in trouble and neither are you. The kingdom of God, guys, is unshakable. It's unshakable. So the kingdom of God is not in trouble and neither are you. Let's keep focus on Him today. So as you're turning to your, in your Bibles or your mobile devices to Hebrews chapter 12, we're going to continue this series. And we're going to finish it today, greater than. Hebrews 12.1 says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great, huge or great crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race which God has set before us. So guys, let us strip off all the things we don't need and let us run with endurance the race which God has set before us. Here's the thing, when we endure, we push through. When we endure, we go farther. When we endure, we go more and more and more and we don't go tired because we know who is with us, the one who gives us strength. On May 6th, 1954, Roger Bannister 
became the first man in history to run a mile in less than four minutes. Amazing. First man in history to run a mile in less than four minutes. Within two months, John Landry eclipsed the record by 1.4 seconds. So this guy set this record in 1954, mile under four minutes. And then two months later, another guy eclipses it. So on August 7th, 1954, the two men met for historic race. As they moved into the last lap, Landy had the lead. He had the lead. It looked as if he would win. But as he neared the finish, he was haunted by this question. Where is Bannister? So what he did is this. He turned to look. And as soon as he turned to look, Bannister took the lead. Landy later told a Time magazine reporter, if I hadn't looked back, I would have won. Don't look back. I want you to hear this again for me. Don't look back. Say it with me. Don't look back. Run the race that Christ has set before you. Run to the finish line. Don't look back at where you had been or where you thought you were, but look forward to what he has for you. Keep your eyes fixed. Why is it in a horse race the horses have blinders on? Why do they have things so they can only see straight ahead? And that's what Christ is saying to you today. Don't look back. Don't dwell in what was, but look to what God has for you. Run the race. How do we do this, though? Here's how we do it. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. Keeping our eyes and our hearts fixed on Jesus. Guys, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. He does it all. Everything is done by, for, for Him and by Him. Because, because of joy awaiting Him, He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now He is seated in a place of honor beside God's throne. Guys, looking to Jesus implies looking away from other things. Think about that for a second. If my eyes and my heart and my mind are fixed on Jesus, then all those other things are just distractions. But what happens is, I get my eyes fixed on something else, and I start going in that direction. But where my heart and my mind is, that's where I go. And so keep your eyes fixed and your heart fixed fixed on Jesus. Hebrews 12, 3-4. Think of all the hostility He endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. Don't give up. Only Jesus. I want you to hear this again. Only Jesus. Stand firm on Him. Stand firm. Keep your eyes and your heart fixed on Him. Run the race. Finish strong. Do it for His kingdom and for His glory. Guys, what happens is, especially now, and in the climate and the world we are in, what does it mean to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus? Why should we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus? We keep our eyes fixed on Jesus because all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. But there's a firm foundation that we can rely on, that we can walk on as we keep our eyes and our hearts fixed on Jesus. For some reason, I'm in a running race mood today, okay? So on March 6, 1987, Eamon Coolahan the Irish world record holder of the 1,500 meters, was running in a qualifying heat for the World Indoor Track Championship. And it was in Indianapolis, and he was excited. He was so rushing. He was like, he's like, I'm going to do this. He's the world record holder. With two and a half laps left, he tripped and fell. He got up, and a great effort managed to catch the leaders. With only 20 yards left in the race, he was in third place, Good enough to qualify for the finals. 
he looked over his shoulder to the inside, and seeing no one, he let up. But another runner, charging hard on the outside, passed Coolahan a yard before the finish, thus eliminating him from the race. Coolahan's great comeback effort was rendered useless by taking his eyes off the finish line. By taking his eyes off the finish line. It's tempting, guys, to let other things set our sight upon other things, isn't it? To look to other things that look a little better sometimes or a little easier. So we look this direction. We start walking this direction. When God is saying, run the race, fix your eyes on me. We only finish well in the Christian race when we fix our eyes on the goal. Jesus Christ. So guys, as we're racing, as we're running, you don't stop in the middle of a race. I want you to hear this very clearly. You don't stop in the middle of a race. You keep running. You keep running. You keep going. You keep going after Him. You don't stop. You keep coming and going and going and going until you reach the finish line. Don't look back. Don't look at where you've been, but look ahead to where God's going to lead you to. Look to Him. Scripture says this, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. Therefore, do we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are renewed every day, day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieved for us in eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since we, what we see is, in a t- is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Guys, fix your eyes. Fix your eyes. We're living in a world where distraction reigns. We're living in a world right now where you hear this, you hear that, you hear that. It's always coming at you nonstop, nonstop. It's, this week I had uh, outside my window a jackhammer going, okay? A jackhammer going outside my window, and it was just nonstop going brrr, brrr. The same way where all around us, the world is making these noises. And there's there. But here's the thing. We keep our eyes and our hearts fixed on Jesus. Let's look at Scripture, Hebrews 12, 25. Be careful. Be careful that you do not refuse to listen to the one who is speaking. For the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, the earthly messenger. We will certainly not escape if we reject the one who speaks to us from heaven. Look at this. Can we go on? When God spoke from Mount Sinai, His voice shook the earth. But now He makes another promise. Once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. This means that all of creation will be shaken and removed so that only unshakable things remain. Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping Him him with holy fear and awe. For our God is a devouring fire. Some versions say a consuming fire fire. Worship Him. The one thing that will never fade away. The one thing that will remain constant is our God. Our God will never remain the same, or always remains the same and never changes. There's a quote I want to share with you by a man named Bannon. This is the only move, unmoving and unshakable thing in this world is Jesus and His kingdom. Guys, the only, I want you to hear this again, the only, only, only unshakable and unmoving thing in this world is Jesus and His kingdom. All around us, guys, the world is always moving, always changing, right? But we have a hope and a reliance that Jesus never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, 
and forever. So let's build our foundation on Him. I love how the message translation says this verse. It says, do you see what we've got? An unshakable kingdom. And do you see how thankful we must be? Not only thankful, but brimming with worship, deeply reverent before God. For God is not an indifferent bystander. I want you to hear that again. For God is not an indifferent bystander. He's actively cleaning house, torching all that needs to be burned, and he won't quit until it's all cleansed. God himself is fire. God is moving. God is working. I want you to stand this, understand this, that our God is a consuming fire. So say it with me. Consuming fire. Say it again. Consuming fire. Since God is in fact a consuming fire, we do best to come to Him on His terms. These are the terms of unmerited approval in Jesus. He will consume all that is outside of that sphere. Think about Elijah. He knew God was a consuming fire. He consumed the sacrifice that Elijah placed before him on Mount Carmel. Solomon knew that God was a consuming fire. He consumed the sacrifice that Solomon entered, uh, offered on the, on the day of the dedication of the temple. He realized, understood that God's consuming fire brought us and should bring us comfort. God the Father has poured out His consuming fire. His consuming fire of judgment on Jesus in our place. When He did it, He completely consumed the guilt of our sin in all, all who believe in Him. All who believe in Jesus. Guys, the penalty of sin was consumed by Jesus Christ at the cross. Aren't you glad about that? The penalty of sin was consumed by Jesus Christ at the cross. You're going to see this on the screen. And here's what I want you to do. As these come up, I want you to say these things with me, okay? As I say them, I want you to say them with me out loud. I'm going to, I'm going to listen to you. I can hear it between online, so we're going to do this. Ready? So look at this. We have a kingdom promise. Say it out loud. We have a kingdom promise. Say this with me. We have the kingdom power. Say it louder. We have the kingdom power. We have the kingdom provision. Some of you guys need to say that right now and believe that God is the one who provides. We have the kingdom provision. And the last one is this. We have kingdom protection. Say it. Scream it out. We have kingdom protection. Because of our Savior, because of our Master, because of our Lord, we have all of these things. We have them all. We can stand firm on the promise of Him, the unshakable, unmoving foundation that Christ has laid before us. We can trust Him. We can hope in Him. We can look to Him without fail each and every time. I want you to hear this. Everything else will fail you. What? Everything else around you will fail you except for God. He will never fail you. You say, Pastor, oh, he's failed me. He's never failed you. He's never failed you. And he won't start now. He's never failed you. It may not have turned out the way you thought it should turn out. But he knew. He knows. He's working. He's moving. He gave you a kingdom promise. He has the kingdom power. He has kingdom provision. And He has kingdom protection. All those things are from Him. All those things from Him. So I'm going to ask you, Sam, to put it on the screen one more time. I want you to see this. And I want you to say each of them out loud. I want you to screen these, okay? So wherever you are right now, even if people are around, just say them out loud. Who, who cares, right? We have kingdom promise. We have kingdom power. We have kingdom provision. We have kingdom protection. We have all those things and more in Christ Jesus. Hebrews 13. There's so many things as we close this chapter out. There's so many different things you can look at. Man, you see the love that we're supposed to have for each other as brothers and sisters. We're supposed to show hospitality to each other. We're supposed to watch out for angels, guys. I want you to encourage you with that. Keep an eye out for angels. Keep an eye out for entertaining angels and seeing angels. 
trust him. God is working all around us. God is moving all around us. Scripture talks about this in this in Hebrews chapter 13. It says, care for those in prison for the sake of the gospel. Honor marriage. Honor marriage, verse 4. Honor marriage. We must learn how to be content too. The Lord our God is my helper. I will not fear. The Lord my God is my shield. I won't be afraid. I must be content. Honor leaders in Jesus. Honor His Word. You see a theme. You see a theme here, right? See this theme. Honor, honor, honor throughout chapter 13. Honor. Offer praise even when it's hard. Chapter 13, verse 15. Offer praise to God even when it's hard. Here's what I want to encourage you with this, is this. Worship. I'm not saying worship just to sing a song. I'm saying worship from here. Worship from here. What happens if all the things you're praying for, your family, your healing, all those things, what would happen if those things were never answered? Would you still worship? Think about it. If all the prayers you prayed to God, none of them were ever answered, would you still worship? Here's the thing. You should and you must because He is worthy of it all. Even if the healing doesn't come, even if those things aren't seen, even if there's a, He is still God. He is still God. And so we must continue to worship and call out to Him and praise Him even when it's hard. There's some things in my life, and I'm sure in your life too, that you can only praise Him in even when it's hard. I mean, I praise Him in the midst of the storms. Sometimes I praise the best when there's something hard going on. And I praise the best this week. I had a situation and I'm helping with some situations and different things all around. And I was thinking about this. The situation seemed overwhelming to me. But here's the thing. I was just going to start praising. So in the midst of the situation, I started praising. I said, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you can take it. Lord, you are more than able. Lord, you can work in this situation. You can move in this situation. You can do whatever you want. And guys, he is faithful. He's faithful. It may not always be the way we think it should be, but it's his way. And we should trust in that. And guys, I want to encourage you with this. Live in a way that honors God. Live in such a way that you honor God with everything you have and everything you are. So turn with me. Hebrews 13, verse 20. Hebrews 13, verse 20. Now, may the peace of God, may the God of peace who brought through the blood, through the blood of the eternal covenant, brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing His will. And may He work in us what is pleasing to Him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. May He equip you with everything good for doing His will. Yes, He has equipped you. James Bryan Smith said this, You are one in whom Christ delights. I want you to read this. Read this. I want you to hear this. I want you to let this this soak into your spirit a little bit. You are one in whom Christ delights. Christ delights in you. He delights, and if you know Him, He dwells in you. You live in the strong and unshakable kingdom of God. The kingdom is not in trouble and neither are you. I want you to hear this again. We live in the kingdom, an unshakable kingdom of God. The kingdom is not in trouble and neither are you. So in this time, this world we're living in, when everything seems to be unstable, when everything around us, the economy, our health, COVID, all these things seem unstable. They seem like they're shaking all over us. We are in a kingdom that's unshakable. We are in a kingdom that doesn't change. We are in a strong kingdom. The kingdom is not in trouble. I love what I said there. The kingdom is not in trouble and neither are you. So maybe it feels like your life is falling apart. Maybe it feels like, man, you're just in an earthquake and the world around you is shaking and rattling. Guys, 
we belong to the kingdom of God. It's unshakable. It's unstoppable. That's the kingdom that we belong to. In these moments, in these times, look to Jesus. Build on the firm foundation. Build your life. Build your heart. Build your family. Build your job on the kingdom of God that doesn't change, doesn't get shaken, and remains firm and steadfast. Guys, He loves you. I want you to hear these words. He loves you. God loves you. I know sometimes we walk through our week and we don't think anyone loves us, do we? All we can see is all that's going on around us. But I want you to hear this. Jesus Christ loves you. Wherever you are, whatever that thing that is going around in your heart, in your life, Jesus is there for you. His kingdom remains steadfast. He's unshakable. He's unchangeable. That's just who He is, guys. That's just who He is. And He loves you. And so can I pray with you, wherever you are, wherever you're watching, you may be watching just down the street or you may be watching some other place. I want you to hear these words. Jesus Christ loves you. He came and died on a cross for you. But He didn't stay there. On the third day, He rose again for you. And because of that, we have a hope and we have a trust in an unshakable kingdom. We can trust that. We don't have to look back at where everything is in the past. We can look forward and run the race before us. Run the race that's been marked out knowing that He is with us. So right now, just bow your heads and close your eyes with me. I just want to pray with you. Would you just lift your hands? And I know this might be uncomfortable. Maybe you're watching with someone else or maybe you're in a place where you're like, ah, I'm not sure about it. Just raise your hand. What you're doing is you're a sign of surrender. Saying, Lord, I give it to you. I can't hold this. And so, Father, in these moments with our hands raised, please thank you. Lord, I thank you as we've been going through the series of this past months, Lord, that you are greater than. Lord, that we can have a hope and a trust and a faithfulness and a belief in you. That you are faithful. Lord, that you are a rock. You are unchangeable. Lord, you are unstoppable. Lord, we can hope and love you with all that we have, not looking to our left or to our right, but looking ahead. And Lord, with our hands raised, Lord, we surrender. We surrender all our wants, all our desires, all our worries, all our concerns, and we place them in your hand. We place them in your hand, Lord. We give them to you, Lord. Because, Father, we trust you and believe you that the kingdom is not in trouble, Lord, and neither are you. Father God, we praise you and exalt your name. And we magnify you. And so may you're listening to this right now. May you're watching this. And you feel like all around you is just falling apart. You feel like everything's shaking. As you walk through your day, as you walk through your you feel like everything is shaking around you. In this moment, there's one who doesn't shake. There's one who doesn't change. That's Jesus Christ. So if you're feeling that, we just give it to Him now. Maybe you've known Him before and you've walked away. Or maybe you've never known Jesus Christ. In this moment, in this time, give it to Him. Give your life to Him. Say, Jesus, I give it all to You. I build my foundation. I build everything on the rock and solid. The firm foundation. In these moments, in this time, trust Him and believe. He is there. He's with you wherever you're watching right now. He's with you. He's with that family member you're concerned about. He's with you. He's in that job interview that you're going to have next week. He's with you. He is with you. Trust Him. Trust Him. Trust Him. He is unshakable. 
guys, no matter what's happened in the world, Christ is unshakable. No matter what's happened in your life, Jesus is unshakable. So when the worries and concerns, the fears and doubts begin to arise, trust in the unshakable God. He has you. And He loves you. He is with you. He is not against you. He's there with you every step of the way. So trust in Him. So do this now. Wherever you are, I want, to, I want you to take a step with me. I know you're watching. I know you're maybe watching your phone or maybe you're watching as you're walking or driving or whatever. Wherever you are. If you're able to, would you just stand with me? Would you stand with me? As we enter this time of worship, as we sing this last song together, I want you to lift your voice in unison. Think how amazing this is. People here at this building right now and people who are all over the country and the world are going to be standing at the same time worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords at the exact same moment. And so guys, remember this. When you are, you're not alone, you're in the kingdom of God. When you believe in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you are part of His kingdom. So would you stand right now as we worship together? Jesus. 